So I'm going to pass the floor now to Mr. Bones if he agrees for just a few minutes so that he can tell us about what has happened. It's certainly difficult, but if you like, perhaps you could speak as regards what is happening across the Atlantic. So you have the floor if you wish to take the floor, sir. Excuse me, Chair, did we have an agenda and you've cut the panel that we've just been having short in order to put an extra item on and it started late because the previous no. panel went on. No, no. So we have an agreed agenda and you just... Me, me, Madam McIntyre, come on. Sorry, Ms. McIntyre. Perhaps you didn't listen to what I said at the start of the session. I said once we had finished the agenda, which is the case because the two panels have finished, I have no more requests for questions from the members in the room. I uh, looked to Mr. Stas to see if he wanted to speak again, and he s said no. And at the beginning of the session, I said that when the second panel was finished, I would ask Mr. Vaughan to speak. I don't have uh, any particular remarks to make on the agenda. The agenda has finished. I wanted to thank the members of the panel and the members uh, here in the room. You were part of that, and you were uh, your participation was extremely important. We've seen your resistance to glyphosate, among other things. So I suggest now to Mr. Vaughan to use the few minutes remaining to uh, give us his opinion on what's going on outside of Europe. We should not be insensitive to what's happening on the other side of the Atlantic. We're talking about pesticides, and we know that what happens on one side has effects on the other. So it's now the time, Mr. Rond, if you wish to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I first off want to thank all of you that are here and everybody that's uh, spoken today and everybody that's been listening with good questions. Uh, this is a remarkable group of people who are looking to the future and health of uh, the, our, our humans, our animals, our insects, our fish, uh, the microbiota. It's incredible that uh, all of you are so concerned about uh, the overall welfare of our biosphere in general. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, in the U.S. Uh, we just uh, had a trial uh, for an individual who uh, has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma as a result of uh, excessive use and spraying of Roundup. And a jury found in our favor uh, for $289 million, uh, $250 million of which was for punitive damages for the uh, malicious and deceitful conduct by Monsanto in manipulating the science for at least 20 years that they knew uh, early on, uh, as um, early as 1999, 1998, that there were studies uh, showing that there was DNA damage being induced by Roundup and uh, glyphosate. And they had the studies reviewed and analyzed internally by one of their own uh, hirees and consultants. He corroborated that problem and they buried it. They didn't pass it along to the EPA, they didn't pass it along to EFSA, they didn't pass it along to anybody. They ghost wrote, had ghost written uh, a different story that uh, conveyed that there was not a problem. And that, that review has misled EFSA and the world for 20 years. I think that much of this information came out in the trial. Uh, I have made that uh, the trial transcripts and all the evidence that was admitted at the trial available onto my website, uh, which is Bomb Headland. Uh, um, well, if you can get there by Googling Bomb Headland and Monsanto Papers, uh, we've added to the Monsanto Papers recently, uh, adding new documents, adding admitted exhibits, uh, plus the transcripts to the trial and the opening arguments. I think that uh, the work that's being done here uh, to uh, look at whether the science that's been um, provided to 
the regulatory agencies is actually valid. Uh, I think the documents that we have declassified and circulated shows that it hasn't been. And I think that the suggestions to uh, actually get the raw data from the studies as opposed to these industry spun summaries is crucial and an excellent idea. I think that the recommendations to have um, studies being uh, commissioned by an independent agency and then funded by the producers who are uh, profiting from them is an excellent idea. These are uh, uh, steps that I think will help. I, uh, I got into this uh, type of uh, litigation at first for a concern over uh, the pollinators. And uh, what I've heard about the neonicotinoids is just scary. Uh, I'm concerned about those and I'm concerned about uh, continued exposure to glyphosate in a way that people don't know about the risks associated with it. And I'm going to do everything I can to see to it that uh, more documents are declassified and that the actual risks are known. I'm happy to answer any questions. Merci. Merci, Mr. Bohm. Thank you, Mr. Bohm. So, Ms. McIntyre, as you can see, it wasn't that terrible at the end of the day. It's important to have someone on the other side of the Atlantic uh, discussing an issue that affects all of us. I think it was correct to give him a few minutes of our time in our agenda. As I said at the beginning of the agenda, for those who wish, Mr. Bohm has some USB keys here. That might help you. The idea is to make progress and have an ambitious report. We hope to conclude that by December of this year. I want to thank you all for your participation and for your contributions. Particularly, I want to thank the panelists. And I use the remaining minutes to also thank our interpreters, without whom our work would not be possible. So thank you all.